Happy Sunday, everybody. Um, my name is Elke Fewer. I'm an author, freelancer, and founder of K Writers. And I, my mission is to help writers reach their writing goals by giving them tangible tips that, they could, that are easy to use and implement. So tonight's training, this is the monthly Facebook Live training. And tonight's training, I'm gonna be sharing with you pitching your book. Now, um, I posted in there if you guys had any questions to go ahead and put them in the event. And a couple of you uh, put your questions through and I've made sure to clarify those in my pitch or in the presentation. It was really difficult to figure out how to put this together because I try to keep these to half an hour. Um, so what I decided to do was to do a before the pitch, when you're pitching, <laughs> and after the pitch is kind of how I've broken it out. So as I'm going through, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them down and then I will answer them when I reach the end, all right? So, pitching your book, what you can do before the pitch. Um, that's really important to, rather than just, hey, get right in there, there are some things that you can do beforehand that will help. Uh, one thing is to read the submission guidelines. I cannot say that enough, whether you're pitching to an agent or you're pitching to a publisher. Now, as I'm going through this presentation, I'll mention publisher or editor. The way that it works is an agent, um, it's usually their business and you're pit or you're pitching directly to that agent. With uh, a publisher, you're usually not just pitching the publisher, but you're pitching an editor that's at that publisher. So when I say editor, that's what I mean, even though I'm talking about the publisher. Okay, so what I was saying is read the submission guidelines. Most websites will tell you right off the bat whether they take unagented submissions, and what that means is that they, don't, they will take work from authors that don't have an agent. Some publishers do, some publishers don't, so it's really important to read the guidelines. The guidelines will tell you exactly what you what is required for you to pitch your book. Um, it could be a query letter, a synopsis. Some publishers ask for three chapters, some ask for the whole manuscript up front. And like I said, this goes back to what I was saying, it's really important to read the submission guidelines. It will save you a whole bunch of work. And not just that, it shows that uh, you've taken the time and energy to you know what you're doing. You've made an effort to learn what it means to pitch. Okay. The second thing is to know who you're pitching to. Um, usually in the submission guidelines, they'll say uh, on the website, the specific um, agent or the specific uh, editor that you should publish or you should submit to or pitch to based on your genre. That's really important because some publishers will have various genres and you don't want to, unless they specify, send to just editor at the publisher. It's important that you find um, go a little deeper and look to see if there's a specific editor that you should send your pitch to based on your genre. Okay, um, if you already know who uh, the editor is or your agent is, uh, maybe you've been scouting them out for a while, I recommend uh, before you pitch is to get to know them um, and their staff, if they have staff, some agents, um, they're the owner of the agency, but then they have staff that manage their social media. Um, the authors that they represent to make sure that they cover your genre and also the, any books that they've published or represented. Um, that's really important to make sure that your book um, is a good fit for them. Um, strike up a conversation or join in conversations. Uh, some editors or publishers, or sorry, some editors or agents will have what they call pitch fests on Twitter and other social media sites. And that's a great way to kind of introduce yourself and get involved in the conversation uh, so that your name stands out. Uh, read books from your genre they represent or publish so that you get a real feel of what they're looking for. Because um, you might think, oh yeah, this is it, but a lot of times they'll go into a little bit more detail. Um, and I think reading the books uh, are really important as well too, like I said, to make sure that it's a good fit. And the reason why I say that is because 
Um, I'll tell you my story when I pitched to Harlequin at a romance conference. I pitched and they accepted um, and later on I sent them my manuscript and they came back and they basically said mm, it's not quite what we were looking for and the reason for that is because although they accepted longer manuscripts the type of story that I had and how I told my story was very different from what they were looking for even though the genre was romantic suspense. It's not necessarily straight across the board sometimes that they're looking for very specific things and reading the books is one great way to find that as well as uh, really digging deep and studying their submission guidelines. Okay. I also recommend reading and studying how to write a great synopsis and a query letter. Um, oh my gosh, there's so many different ways that it can be done that I really recommend that you do this. I, I think I studied it um, <laughs> for months before I actually pitched to um, Harlequin when I did my first pitch in person. I mean, I just spent like every website you could think of, books, all of that to study different types based specifically on the genre that I wrote. Um, there's some great samples on Writer's Digest. I know one another when I did the presentation um, or another Facebook Live on how to write synopsis, I put the link is in there. Um, but you can just uh, do Writer's Digest and search the site for um, synopsis or query letter samples and they'll have tons of samples there that you can look at. Okay, uh, it's important to understand the email format. I know that that was something um, someone in the group requested um, and I'm going to use my email pitch to my first book as an example. And basically what I did is uh, when you're writing the email, or this can be the query, um, one of the things that I did is I actually, my email was my query. And the reason why I did that is because I didn't want to just attach an email and just say, you know, this is who I am, I'm submitting this, and then please see attach query. Um, I really wanted them to get a feel of who I was and what my book was about without having to open an attachment. Um, I did include my synopsis, obviously, but I put, I formatted my email in such a way that um, they didn't have to take another step. They could find out what they needed quickly to decide, eh or nay, and it worked. <laughs> so I'm going to break it down for you. Uh, basically, I an introduction of where and how you met. Like for instance, my um, second pitch or my email pitch was to Crimson Romance and I didn't actually meet them in person, but I found uh, where they were requesting for submission. So I put that in there, hi, you know, and I put that that's why, that's how I found out about um, the request that they were looking for. Uh, if you met them in person, that's a great way to do it so that they know that you're not a stranger. If you met them on social media, it's just so that it's just a great way to introduce yourself and how you heard about this pitch or them. Um, your word count and the genre that you write, um, that lets them know straight off the top how many words and what genre. Good night. Sorry, my son going to bed. <laughs> uh, a summary of the story you're pitching. Um, Basically what that is, that's the way that I formatted mine is what would go on the back of my book, like the book description or book blurb depending on how you describe it. So um, that's exactly what I did. It turned out to be sort of three sentences and one sort of catch phrase. And um, just to add, I will actually post a sample of that email just so that you have something to look at. But I also recommend looking at other query letters, specifically if you're writing um, I know uh, memoirs are slightly different um, as far as what you pitch. Um, the other thing is children's books. Uh, so everything is a little bit different, but I think some of the basis of this goes straight across the board, but I would recommend um, you studying a little bit more specific to your genre. Okay, uh, so like I said, a summary of the, the story. What is the story about so that they get, so it's almost like they're picking up your book and reading what it's about to decide whether they want, they want to get by it or not. Um, who you are and where you can be found. This is where you tell uh, the publisher a little bit about you. 
Um, also, these, this can be things like any memberships that you have, certifications that are all writing related, um, author and book, book awards, maybe, you know, you've self-published something that has an award, um, show that you have, if you have a social media presence or a website or a blog, I would mention that anything that shows that you have an online presence and that you're not just writing one book but you're pursuing a career. Now, if you are just writing one book, that's fine. Um, you can perhaps just state that, although I wouldn't personally, but it just shows the uh, publisher or agent that you have taken progressive steps to present yourself to the world. Um, offer to send chapters or full manuscript if that isn't a requirement already. Uh, some some uh, publishers will request like the first three chapters um, along with the synopsis and query letters and some will just want the query letters and synopsis and you know then decide if they want to see chapters or a full manuscript so I actually offered that in there as well too so that it also does two things it tells them that yeah you finished the book <laughs> um, which is one thing I recommend that you do yes Getting accepted can take a long time, but what happens if they come back in two weeks and say, yeah, this is great, send me the manuscript, and you're halfway through. And it takes you another six months or longer. By the time you go around to that, it doesn't look so great. So I really, I really uh, would not put that in there, or I wouldn't pitch unless you finished your first, you're completely finished, and you've done a few edits. I would even recommend that you've gone through beta readers as well too. Um, now, I, just to add to that, it's a little bit different for memoirs. I know that some uh, publishers will accept a memoir even if it's not finished, but I personally wouldn't recommend it, but if you're eager to just see if it's something that, like if it's the only book that you're ever gonna write and you just wanna see if somebody's even interested in it, then that might be a good choice. But again, really look and make sure in the submission guidelines that that is something that they're willing to look at um, ahead of time. Okay, um, I mentioned this already, but I'm gonna say it again. Um, I recommend using your email as your query, the query format. Like I said, that way, it's not something that they have to open and read. Everything that they need to know about you, your book, um, is already there. Okay, um, I wouldn't recommend doing that with your synopsis. <laughs> uh, some things to avoid. Uh, that was one of the things that somebody else sort of, you know, what to word, what words to capture their attention, what words to use, what words not to use. Um, I, there aren't any specific words that I could think of, to be quite honest. But what I, what I did come up with is saying, you know, don't compare your books to other authors and similar stories. Now, I know some authors that live by this, and if it's something that you feel comfortable doing, then, you know, I guess it wouldn't hurt. But I personally, it's not something that I personally do and or recommend. Um, meaning, don't say, like, this is the next, um, uh... I'm the next Robin Cook or I'm the next uh, Joan of Arc or whatever. Um, that's not a good example, but you get the idea. Um, or, you know, if you like these kind of books uh, by this author, then you'll love my story. Um, like I said, some authors do that, but I personally wouldn't recommend it because you're putting your book in another category. Now, some, author, some publishers want to know that, hey, it's a similar story. It's something that sells. But... It's not something that I would personally recommend. Um, don't brag about yourself or your book. Uh, just give the basics of what your book is about, who you are. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. Not I'm the latest, I'm the greatest author, blah, 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 blah. You know, I want, yes, you want to say you won awards, but you want to, they want to know that they can work with you as well too. So it's important that, yes, you want to be yourself, but at the same time, you don't want to overdo it with coming across as somebody that might not be easy to work with or difficult to work with. Um, and then the last thing is, uh, don't be negative about other stories and authors. The reason why I added this is because I had a friend of mine ask me to uh, read a query email that she was going to send, and she just blasted like the whole 
industry that and the genre that she was uh, writing saying you know this th my book is nothing like all this other stuff that's out there this is my book and I was like uh, not the best approach so I would avoid anything like that as well anything that talks negatively about the industry authors stories anything like that like I said it shows that you're perhaps not an easy author to work with um, and obviously the editor wants to know or agent wants to know that they can work with you as well as you can want to know that you can work with them. Okay, um, let's see. The other thing I would recommend is ask other authors how they did it, both the successes and unsuccessful experiences. Now, if you don't have any authors to talk to, then you just go with what you can go with. But... I would definitely recommend doing that, um, even the unsuccessful ones, because you can get tips on what to avoid by talking to them. Um, I also recommend having someone read and provide feedback on your query or synopsis. Um, just as is another pair of eyes, um, somebody that you trust and know is going to give you constructive criticism and not somebody who's just going to say, oh yeah, this is fantastic. That's not what you want. You want someone's honest, constructive feedback who are really going to uh, make it better, okay? Um, you, the other option is you can hire a professional as well too, especially like if your nose, it's been, you know, a few years and you've sent out like thousands of, well, that's an exaggeration, you know, 10 or more um, requests and you're still getting, it might be that it's something with how you're wording your presentation. So I, there are uh, professionals out there that will do that for you. So that's another option. Okay, on to the pitching. <laughs> um, there's different forms of pitching. There's pitching by email, there's p pitching um, on social media, and there's also pitching uh, in person. Um, I would say, uh, you know, look for pitch opportunities, whether it's at conferences, social medias, um, some of them, there's pitch fests, which can be online or on a specific site. Uh, it's a great way to practice because a lot of them are real pitches and some of them are just editors who will allow you to pitch and they'll provide feedback as the prize, so to speak. So those are great opportunities to get free uh, feedback <laughs> and also to connect with those future um, with agents and editors as well too um, and the other thing is to if you're pitching by email is to read through your email several times before sitting sending that uh, hitting that send button um, I know I've been where I've sent out stuff and I've been like oh crap you read through it and you think, yeah, yeah, I did it, it looks great. And then afterwards you're like, ah, oh, you spelled somebody's name wrong or, you know, it's just, I recommend reading it, like write it up, read it a few times, leave it till the next day even before you hit send um, because you definitely, that can be a big uh, red ink against you, let me tell you. Don't be afraid to use the spell check and you know, beware, because we all know autocorrect isn't always the best option either, right? Okay, um, let's see. I also, when you're pitching, uh, it used to be years ago that you could only pitch to one agent at a time, and you had to wait till you heard back from them. That's actually changed. So don't be afraid to pitch to more than one agent or publisher to increase your chances. However, make sure that you track it. Like, I used to have a spreadsheet where I tracked who I sent it to when, or you can just move it into a folder in your, e your email, whatever works easier for you. It's just so that you just know who you've sent it to so you don't accidentally send it to the same person again. Okay, <laughs> um, when you're pitching in person, um, I'm gonna share some tips with that. Like if you're at a conference or an event where you are in front of uh, an agent or an editor, I recommend uh, you introduce yourself, obviously, who you are, what you write, your genre, how you heard about them, why you chose to pitch to them, um, and obviously do your pitch, and give them one of your business cards. Um, I recommend if you're going to a conference to have 
uh, business cards, even if there's some that you did up on your printer. Uh, you know, there's so many options to make business cards look professional. Um, I think like Vistaprint, uh, you can do a whole bunch. And if you're going to a conference overseas, you can just send it to the, the hotel if it's too expensive to ship where you're going to. So there's lots of really great options. You can do that for like 25 bucks. Um, have your pitch on a flash card. Now, if you feel comfortable enough that you can pitch it without doing that, that's fine. But they're not going to hold it against you <laughs> if you're holding. I went with flashcards. I think I had two flashcards because I was so incredibly nervous. I mean, I memorized that thing. I changed it. I mean, I was scribbling making changes while I was waiting in line. <laughs> but um, I just, because you're going to be nervous. And having those flashcards there are really handy so that you don't forget anything. And it kind of... I wouldn't say eases the tension, but it kind of gives you a smidgen of confidence. <laughs> All right. Um, the other thing as well, too, is if you are pitching in person, um, you might have the opportunity. They might ask you questions, like, you know, or they might say, hey, do you have any questions for me? And you want to be prepared for that. So um, in my particular pitch, that wasn't an option because it was just like, bam, you had five maybe 10 minutes, not even, to pitch, and then boom, out, next person was in. It was like rooms and rooms and rooms, like literally hundreds, if not thousands of people pitching. So I didn't have that opportunity. But I wanted to add this in case it was a little bit more intimate situation where um, they did turn around and say, hey, did you have any questions for me? And you weren't sort of sitting there thinking, oh, crap, no, I hadn't even thought about it. So <laughs> some things to, some questions that you could ask is about their editing style. Um, or their management style, depending on whether you're pitching an agent or an editor. Um, the other thing is their production schedule. Like some of them are six months, some are a year, some are 18 months. So it's just good for you to know um, how involved our writers are in book production. Like do you get any say in your book cover or the... Um, what goes on the back for the book description. Some publishers, yay, some publishers, no. If this is something that's important to you, then that might be good to know. Um, you know, what their marketing is, like do they do anything or are you responsible for everything? Trust me, <laughs> that is a huge thing for some authors. Um, and any, you know, technical stuff that, or anything else that you want to know about that publisher, that agent, or that editor. So those are some questions that you can ask. Okay, after your pitch, it's done, you're gone. Don't be afraid to follow up with the people that you've pitched to. Um, now, obviously, I wouldn't say, you know, give it a week and then email them. Um, a lot of times, editors and publishers get hundreds, thousands of emails in their inbox. I would say give at least a month, minimum a month. Um, I personally would focus on pitching to um, focus on finding other places to pitch to and improving how I do it and working on your book um, rather than stressing over the fact that they haven't gotten back to you because that will stress you out. And the last thing you wanna do is hound, <laughs> hound somebody. I would just, I mean, not that you shouldn't follow up, but I wouldn't follow up any more than a month minimum. Um, sometimes on the, on the uh, submission or on the, website, they'll tell you uh, how much time to wait or to expect, um, just so that you know as well too. I had a spreadsheet where I put that on there so that I know, okay, their wait time is, you know, two weeks, a month, some as long as three months, depending on the publisher. So um, that's another option as well too, so that you know when you can follow up. Um, study your pitch to see how you can improve it. Um, if you received uh, a rejection, uh, some people will, you know, provide you with feedback as to why they didn't accept your story, and that might it might be that it just wasn't a good fit, or it might have been something with how you presented it and how you pitched it. So, you know, use that information uh, to improve it for when you pitch again, um, and identify other publishers, agents that you can pitch. Um, 
work, start working on your next book if you've already finished. You know, trust me, because once that whole they accept your your book, it's just like there's tons. It's going to be a whirlwind, and trying to get to your next book is going to be. Trust me. <laughs> so, you know, if you've done everything that you can, you've pitched to all of the editors and agents that you want to, go ahead. You're happy with how you've edited the book. Um, go on to the next store if you have one. Don't, and last but not least, don't take the rejection personally. Um, I know that's hard because this is something that you've put your blood, sweat, and tears in, and it feels like they're telling you, it's like the principal telling you you're, there's a problem with your child and they they got to get kicked out of the school or something. I mean, this is this story is really your baby. Um, and it's hard not to take it personally, but the truth is it might be that it's just not a good fit. And it's, I'll be honest with you, y y I would recommend um, getting used to rejection. And I don't mean that, I'm just trying to say, it, because building up thick skin about it because not everybody's gonna like your story. You think the rejection from editors and publishers are gonna be bad? Wait till you see some of the reviews and reviewers. They are harsh, let me tell you, and you have got to have some thick skin. And also, when you start dealing with an editor and you come back and you see all that red ink and you're like, oh my God, I suck. Rather than getting yourself into that mindset that I'm not good enough and my story's not good enough, is start thinking, okay, not everybody's going to like what I have to offer. Okay, if they gave me constructive feedback, hmm, can I use it to get better, to improve my story, to improve my pitch, um, and look at it that way. If the feedback isn't constructive, you know what? Scream, ah, they suck, I hate your guts. Move on. <laughs> you will save yourself a world of hurt. Let me just tell you that from now. So, I hope that you found this information helpful. Oh, sorry, I missed one last thing, actually, is to remember that lots of now famous authors face huge amount of rejections. I mean, there's, I can't remember, I think it was either 20 or 30 um, publishers turned down um, J.K. Rollins before her book was picked up. You know what I mean? And I think in the end, the publisher, it was actually the publisher's daughter, eight-year-old daughter, that was like, oh, Dad, this is an awesome story. You have to get it done as to how it came to fruition. So, you know, even if you've got five or ten rejections, I can't remember how many rejections. I mean, I could wallpaper bathroom how many rejections I've gotten from when I was in my 20s starting to pitch. Um, and it, it's important to remember even you know, authors that are famous now went through rejection and went through the stage that you're going in. So don't lose hope. Just keep trying. Okay. Uh, do you guys have any questions that you'd like to ask? Um, we've got some time here. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them in the comments. Anything you like. Um, as I mentioned, I will be posting the sample email that I sent, uh, just so you can kind of get an idea and a feel. Uh, the Writer's Digest website is great for examples um, of various synopsis. Um, if you'd like to have, if you want to have, see examples of that, um, so that's one option. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions come in, but if you're watching the replay, um, feel free to still go ahead and post your questions and I'll keep my eyes open for them and I will be happy to answer them for you. And if you are watching live and you think of questions afterwards, feel free to post them and I will be happy to answer them. Well, Monday is tomorrow in a new week, so I hope you have a fantastic rest of the evening and that you are ready to start writing next week because that's what this group is all about is to get you to start writing so i will see you guys um for action monday bye